We continue on the Super Speedway Swing in the Gary Cup Series as we head to Pensacola, the Three Mile Oval here in Florida for the running of the Mountain Dew 500. On the pole is the 48 of Isaac Nichols, two's outside the three of Sebastian Kukulan. Then 30 of points leader Max Harris to find a way to start up front, but it may be hard to finish up there. Diego Yapez in fourth and rang out the top five. Derek Bouchard, that 17 team, fast here on their circuit plate tracks this season. Then 60 of Jeff Wright, seventh and eighth in Seattle Tune, one last race out at Talladega, going for two in a row here in Super Speedway races. They have Trey Rainey in eighth, Jake Galloway in ninth, and Mac Johnson rounding out the top ten. The rest of the field is Riley Sampson in the 18 with Justin Zaydell in the 20, those are two teammates. They have Colton Yo and Carter Friesen. And then there's Jake West and Patrick Smith. Luke Rainey in second in points, TJ Hanley starting midfield. They have Jonathan Reigns and Steve Larker, along with Steven Taylor and John Gamut. Then there's Benny Watson and Jay Jefferson, Taylor Ryan Price and Stephen Baker. They have Derek Hamill and Luigi Octavo, Jack Marshall and Code Luigi. Then there's Eli Bright and Alexander Rowe, Tyler Fink and Johnny Gardner. They have Steve Morgan and Griffin Lynn, Joe Jefferson and Dale Lightning. Then Carson Bowers and James Stavolito. And in the final row, Jonathan Beeper in the 33 with Danny Lloyd in the 19. Two is outside starting in the final position. That is our shot on that for this, which sure to be wild, Mountain Dew 500. Let's get our starting command to fire the engines. On behalf of the many great folks at Bass Pro Shops, Tracker and MBA, gentlemen, start your engines! The 4-2 car field rolls off the starting grid for what's going to be the start of the Mountain Dew 500 here at Pensacola. The fastest game of Chestnut Sea here in the Gay Ray Cup Series. Speeds over 220 miles an hour in a 3-4 and four wide pack for 26 laps. And the big one lurking around every corner. If they don't have it, all four Ducars will have a shot at this race victory. Who's it going to be? Can Hendrick Moore Sports Car get to victory lane? Two of them starting into the top ten. Three of the four Joe Gibbs cars starting near the top ten. You have the two BKR cars. If TJ Hanley and Louis Jack Table have been strong, and your points leader Max Harrison in third, trying to steal another victory this season. We'll find out after 26 laps who's standing in victory lane. Pace guard to pit road, and we're green here at Pensacola. Derek Bouchard already making moves. He goes from the third starting spot on the inside and fifth to second as they come down the back stretch. He made a three out of on Max Anderson. And now he's going to get stuck to the middle of a three wide by Nathan Stapleton in the 27. Stapleton won last race out at Talladega. Go for that super speedway sweep. Try to get down front. Galloway fills the hole to the inside. Through three and four the race. Three wire at the front of the pack. Galloway gets to second. But meanwhile, Isaac Nichols out front controlling the lanes. Off of four the race. Here comes Isaac Nichols. To lead lap number one of the Mountain Dew 500 in the 48 car, Jake Galloway moves up top three wide. They get try and get clear right there to keep second. He has a push from Nathan Stapleton, but he's not going to be able to get clear. Here comes Jake West to the bottom. Hanley forced it forward wide in the 23 car. He's going to be aggressive. He's second in points. He has a huge points gap over fourth place, about 200 points he has over fourth place. Why not make some moves here and try and win another Gary Cup Series race this season? He has two. He's going for a third. And behind them down the back stretch, a huge pack of cars. Snarling, hungry for a victory. Hanley gets to the inside of the 40 off into turn three. Had a great run. Oh, there they go! Jeff Bright hard to the outside wall. That's a big crash. Galloway involved with Nathan Stapleton. Those are two cars that are inside the top ten of points. Three cars go for a spin. The yellow flag is out and racing back to the caution flag. It'll be TJ Hanley with the race in the 23. Steve Larker in second and Reigns in third. Big one. Lap number three. But it's only three cars involved, but some hard hits. Oh, Anderson, your points there involved. In the 47, there's Jeff Bryan, Perro damage, but four cars take a lick. Galway, Stapleton, Anderson, and Bright all involved in a big crash as they go into turn number three. We'll see how it happened early on. Caution number one. From what I saw here, the five was the first one to get clipped. It looks like he's just a little bit. Look, you see all the space down here. There's a car, car length right there that someone could fit. And I think Jeff Bright and Stapleton will make some contact right here. So they're rubbing and Jeff's just a little bit too high right there. 
and into Stapleton, they'll go off into turn three, and they go straight to the wall, and hard hit for the 27 and the five. The 11, Yepes gets damage on the one, and then Anderson comes up and nails the five again. But five cards get damage from that, one of them being your points there, and the other two were in the top 10 points. Stapleton moved up big time after his win. He's going to fall down now in the points, but he has that win. Galway has no win and no safety net, so he's currently going to be falling. Jeff Bright has had a terrible season thus far. It's just adding to that. Max Harris, obviously, your points there coming to the race. And Yepes was just outside the top 10 points, so let's see how damaged that number one car is, if at all. So tough break for those four that got major damage, possibly tough break for all five of them, as five cars get some sort of damage in that. Meanwhile, leaning them back to the caution flag, it was TJ Hanley in the 23 car. He's having his best Gary Cup Series season thus far. He'll stay on the racetrack and leads back to the green flag. It'll be 20 laps to go once we take the green flag. Out front, still TJ Hanley in the 23. And from that crash, Jeff Bright out. Not good for his point situation. Jake Galway, that's not good for his point situation. Max Anderson could lose the points. At least he's going to finish 48th there tonight. And Nathan Stapleton could fall back outside the top 10. 39th involved in that crash. Diego Yepes came down the pit road to fix some damage there. He'll be 38th. We'll see if that car is up to speed. So Hanley leads with Larker in second, Reigns third, Nichols fourth, and Watson rounding out the top five into the restart zone. And we're back racing here at Pensacola. And the guy, pretty good jump there. Nichols, your pulls here, fighting back to the outside lane, trying to gain some spots. Watson fills the hole down low. Here comes Derek Bouchard once again. Another big move out of that 17 car. Uh, that, that team knows that they are good here at the super speedways, the restrictor plate tracks. They know they can get a victory here. And uh, I think it's showing with Derek Bouchard. He's having some confidence by the way of making some of these moves. But Watson, watch out for that 32 car. And though he's not really in a position to make the chase, no matter what he does, I think he's going to be going for some wins here. And I, I think he can definitely get it done. That 32 team has had the speed, just not the luck to get it done. He's actually pushing the four underneath the 75 of Steve Larker. Back there, the four's teammate Jake West made a big move underneath Derek Bouchard to get inside of that 17. Now for the race lead, Hanley jumps to the top as Jonathan Reigns in the four moves to the inside. He'll grab the race lead. Three fours line up on the bottom lane, and they shuffle this Toyota of TJ Hanley to the top. And Jonathan Reigns comes down the front stretch, moves up to block the 23's advance. He'll lead the lap, walks into the middle as Jake West goes down low on the 14. Big push from pole sitter Isaac Nichols. Trey Rams ran very, or very well last race at Talladega before being involved in the final crash. He's up inside the top three that night. Five cars been pretty strong all season. Here comes Nichols on that second position. Down the back stretch, he races. He might look to the inside of the 14 here. He's getting a big push on that 95 of Trey Rain. He, oh, he may move. There he goes to the inside finally. Nichols makes that move to the bottom lane. He gets underneath Jake West. See that single file train at the back trying to get caught up. They are all single file. And maybe some drivers had some slower restarts. Isaac Nichols, your pole sitter, back out front now in the Mountain Dew 500. Colton Yeo moves to second, the 37 car. He's still looking for his first Gary Cup Series win. Hard to imagine that after, the, after some of the close calls he's been involved in. He looks at the inside of the 48. Luke Rennie in the two. Trying to move back up in the points. Here he is, three wide to the bomb with the push from Eli Bright, who's trying to break that long winless streak in the 88 car. He's sitting top five as of now. But still over 16 laps to go in this race. So you're making way up front now, you might not be there in two laps. You could be, for all you know, 20th in two laps. Eli Bright, big move! Gets underneath Luke Rainey. Colton Hill's trying to, trying to stay clear in the 37. Eli has a huge advance with a push from Jay Jefferson. That was a big move out of the 88 car. And Eli Bright and Jay Jefferson hooking together. And Eli will clear Colton Hill off a of four. He's your new race leader now. The Mountain Dew sponsored car out front in the Mountain Dew 500. Eli Bright leads lap number 9, 17 to go. Jay Jefferson to the bottom, Alexander Rowe behind him. Rowe's up there in the top 5 in points, so he can take some risks, but he's not really that safe. He's still pretty close to the cutoff, but he has a few wins to use his wild cards if he would need it. Jay Jefferson won at Michigan to break a winless streak last season. Now he's leading the, Pen the Pensacola race, the Mountain Dew 500. He moves down to the middle to try and break the draft off that 72 car. Here comes Carter Freeze in the 38, one, winner at uh, Phoenix. Here he comes to the bomb lane, trying to make an advance. He has Johnny Gardner behind him. Max Johnson, the 24, not that far behind as well. So the 78 car, Jay Jefferson leads now. The Mountain Dew 500. As they come off the corner. See a guy in the outside lane there, Joe Jefferson. He was very close to a victory at Pensacola last season. It was the second Pensacola race. He lost by a few thousands of a second to the one car of Emmett Juckum. So, uh, Chip Ganassi racing knows how to get around here, but I believe the one is a little off pace at Yepes. Yeah, he's just come off a of four now. He's a little bit off pace, and Kuklan's on pit road with an issue, and Stefan Baker has lost the draft because of that, and John Gamerton endangered losing the draft as well. 
Now down the back, here comes Mac Johnson, the 24, down low. He has a run, he'll get beneath that 78. And he'll stay side by side with him through three and four, but no help to that 24. All the help to the 78. Tyler Fink is up in the middle lane. Here comes Bowers, though, trying to save that 24 as they come off four. And Cole Luigi in the 42 trying to turn his season around. They are five wide further back there. That's close, but I think they sort out. Mac Johnson, they're still side by side with Jay Jefferson. Jefferson leads the lap. He could get clear right here for, off in the turn one. He got a huge push from Fink. And right there, the 78 car is clear. So Jay Jefferson fights back in the outside to stay clear. Jefferson continuing to lead the Mountain Dew 500, showing he has a pretty good car just like at Talladega. He got front. He led laps. No one could pass him until late in the race. And then he was involved in the last caution. So Jefferson trying to bring another fast plate car to the track and get to victory. But once again, Carson Bauer is looking low in the six car. This time he's a run. He might be able to keep up beside that 78. But still no help behind Third on back, very far behind. Here comes Daniel in the 19. He's trying to split to the middle. Excuse me, he'll get down in front of the 51. Not quite, though, as Dale Lane comes with that shuffle to the 78. And Bowers has a pretty good gap. You don't want that here at Pensacola, though. You want to be pretty tight with that pack behind you. Dale Lightning in the 51 moves to second. Another Mountain Dew sponsored car. There's three Mountain Dew sponsored cars in this race. Dale Lightning in the 51, Mac Johnson in the 24, and Eli Bright in the 88. All Chevrolets sponsored by Mountain Dew in the Mountain Dew 500. How big would it be if they could get to Victory Lane for their sponsor? So Dale Lightning gets the second, but it's a long ways ahead to Carson Bowers, who has pulled a pretty good gap over the field. As they were three and four right behind, he's allowed to pull away with them, side drafting each other and slowing each other down. Luke Rain, the two moves low. But he's going to get forced four wide. Jake Weston, the 14, moves low. Oh, there they go. Eli Brighton around with the 18 of Riley Sampson. Derek Bouchard involved in the 17. Eli slams the outside wall. Joe Jefferson, John Gambit, Hanley. There's Gardner and the yellow again for a crash entering turn three. Back in front will be the six of Carson Bowers. And he got it easily there. Bowers leads at halfway. 13 laps to go. And we see another crash happen off into turn number three. This time, Sampson involved. Along with Gardner, one of the Mountain Dew cars. Eli Everett, we just talked about him. Joe Jefferson, we talked about him. Stephen Baker made it through. Hanley gets some damage. And the 23 car, that's second in points. So your top two in points having issues. Max Harrison out of the race. And Hanley with damage back in 30th. Big one off into turn number three. This time, Eli Bright, the other Bright, involved in the 88 car. We'll see what happened. Now this was halfway down the back stretch. See the 88 of Eli Bright right there in the middle lane. I think it's at the 10 of Stabileo, who is outside. And they just get hooked together. Around they go. They just clip Samson. The 82 goes up and spins around. Johnny Gardner. There's Derek Shark getting into the 18. The 88 comes across track. He gets hit by Joe Jefferson. There's Gardner and Hanley getting spun up to the outside. John Gammon in the middle of it. He gets damage right there. John Buford looked like he did a great job getting through. But all in all, about six, seven cars with damage. Oh, man. The seven car Griffin Lynn, very fortunate to get by that one. But a tough break for many drivers. Eli Brown, the 88, still looking for that first victory since season number four. He's involved along with many others. Riley Sampson, Joe Jefferson, and Hanley could have taken over the points lead. Instead, now he has some damage. We'll see if he can, he can continue on up to speed, but looks like he could have some damage and potentially be off pace. So from that crash, yellow out and back in front will be the six of Carson Bowers. And Bowers is going to lead us back to the green flag. Coming back green on lap number 18. So it'll be nine laps to go here at Pensacola. So Taylor Van Price actually lost an engine at some point during that. He was not involved in the crash, but an engine issue for the 15 puts him out of the race. But from that crash, Joe Jefferson and Derek Richard retired along with Riley Sampson. The 18 team was going to keep it in, but he was overheating with some sort of issues. So that's why he's out along with John Gamut in the 77. Benny Watson with an issue heading to the pit road. 32 cars on lead lap. Watson was set to restart. And the 32 car in eighth. So leading will be Carson Barris, Dale Lightning, and Jake West, your top three. We get back racing here in the Mountain Dew 500 green flag back out as Bowers takes lap number 18. Front four got away. Luke Green a little bit of wheel spin right there and allows the 20 of Justin Zedell to the inside. So here comes Jake West in the 14. Gets beneath the 51 of Dale Lightning. Carson Bowers out front of the six. His only Gary Cup Series victory was the Daytona 500 last season. Ever since then, it's been a pretty rough Downhill slide for Bowers, looking to turn around here at Pensacola with another Super Speedway win. The, and Roush Fenway seems to know how to do it. Derek Bouchard has run great at the Super Speedway this season. Bowers has won at Super Speedway. So don't count that six out, even though he may not have had the best season so far. He can definitely get to victory lane here. Patrick Smith moves underneath the 14. He'll move to second. He has a push from Justin Zidell. Here comes John Therese in the four. Danny Loy in the 19 is up here. And how about Cole in the 42? Hanging tough. Is that Hanley stuck on the racetrack? That is very dangerous. Yellow does come out. There's an issue to the 23. And that is a light yellow. And it's just going to take more laps off the board. 
Bowers leads us back, and we're lucky that was not a huge crash. Hanley is still stopped. Says he's moving very slowly, and that actually saves Watson with the third who stayed on the lead lap. So Watson will have another chance. He'll, he'll start behind some damaged cars, but he has a shot to try and get around them. Yellow is out, as Hanley does get warped to pit road. We'll see what happened, and maybe if it was some sort of engine issue, or this just happened periodically. Hanley actually came down pit road for that restart. Right here, you see him, after coming down pit road, just kind of stalled out on him. He's coasting around, only going 50 miles an hour in the banking. And that's just going to keep slowing down because he's on the banking. And it slows the car all the way down. He's down there into gear one. He's trying to just get it onto pit road, I'm guessing. And he's trying to keep it as low as he can without getting down that apron. And right here, just going to quit on him. He's going to be stuck in the middle of the racetrack. And the pack will come flying on by, which is a very dangerous situation. Thankfully, the spires were paying attention. Everyone saw what was happening before something turned out horribly wrong. But right here, you can see the 23 still coasting, still coasting, and still coasting. And it looks like there might be something wrong with the suspension on that car. With how that car kind of looks, looks like it's a little off off balance there so I'm wondering if maybe some suspension issues will put Hanley on the straight right there he gets onto the banking and the apron which is just going to slow the car down even more it's actually going to stall right off of turn number four and that is a very dangerous spot that's a blind corner for most of these drivers and we're lucky no one hit that 23 and we're lucky Hanley actually got low enough to get out of the way right there you see the caution still not out and I think the caution is going to come out as Hanley starts stalling. Right there, you see he's still moving. They're thinking maybe get on to the apron and maybe get into a turnoff point. Right there, you see it's still green. We're looking at the, the lights right here on the left. Still green. Still green. He's about stuck. There's the caution lights. So they threw it as the field was coming around. That's a huge break for Benny Watson. He'll have to start behind some damaged cars. I'm sure he'll take that over getting lapped and possibly even finishing around 30th. So from that, that's going to take more laps off the leaderboard, which is going to help Bowers out as he's leaning under the caution flag through all this. Bowers is going to have to deal with the late race restart. It's going to be under five to go. So if we have another caution after that, it will be over. Coming green this time with four to go. If the yellow comes out, the race is over. Hanley actually not retired from that. He's still 32nd, but he's two laps down. They fixed the issues at 23. We're hoping. So hopefully he can keep it going there. 31 cars. I'm going that Bang Watson last of them. He's going to try and get by the 88, the one on the 43, on up to about the 33. They're all the ones that are really off pace. Carson Bowers trying to hold on and win. He's led the last half of this race, basically, because of the yellow flags. Patrick Smith in second, Justin Zedell third, John Thrain's fourth, and Jake West up inside the top five. That's two Stuart Haas cars. Watch for them to try and make a move together. Here they come to the restart zone. Carson Bowers with the race lead. Patrick Smith in second. And we are back racing. Green flags on wheels bearing here. The 14. Dane Lloyd looks to the outside. And that could fill a hole down low for Cole Luigi in the 42. John Thrain's also up top. Look at Mac Johnson going three wide in the 24. Wants to win for his sponsor, Mountain Dew. Up front, Patrick Smith for the race on Bowers. Early move. Can he keep it beside him and clear him as they come off turn number two? Still get up to full song. Just now reaching 200, and Patrick Smith has cleared the six of Bowers. And down the back stretch. See, I think everyone's up to speed. Hanley is up to speed, so we're fine there. Justin Zidell looking three wide down the back stretch. Big push from Jake West and Mac Johnson. Zidell to the race lead, coming to three to go. Who's going to be in the right spot at the right time? Still tons of time left unless the yellow comes out. Justin Zidell, your new racer in the Mountain Dew 500. Off of four. Looked like the 14 looked to the inside, but Mac Johnson already right down there. Three laps left. And they're four wide in the pack. Mac Johnson shuffled three wide middle. Steve Morgan to the bottom lane, the 13. Tyler Fink is pusher. Danny Lloyd there. Patrick Smith trying to get down from Luke Rainey in the number two. He had a hole, couldn't get down there. Zydell, you're still your leader. Steve Morgan, second. Looking for the race lead down the back stretch. A hard swing to the left. And Tyler Fink, his pusher. Morgan side by his half in a turn three, and he takes it. Steve Morgan come to the race lead with two to go. But anyone in this front pack has a shot. Back to Isaac Nichols in the 48 car. Morgan leads. Fink is second. Lloyd third. Luke Rainey. Colton Yo. Your top five. Coming to see. Two laps to go. Front two single file. Tyler Fink still behind Steve Morgan. Doesn't want to make a move quite yet. Luke Rainey shuffle three wide mill. Allows Danny Lloyd to stay clear. And Colton Yo now to fourth. One and a half laps to go. It's still Steve Morgan up front. Tyler Fink still trying to run him down in that 21 car. Does he have a move to the inside at all? 
He's riding to his back pump here. Comes Alexander on the 72, looking low. Colton Yo wants a Gary Cup Series victory for third. Colton Yo to third with a push from Alexander Rowe. Tyler Fink still in the back bumper of that 13, waiting for the right time to make the move. Off of four, we're coming to see the white flag in the Mountain Dew 500. Fink thinks it's time to go. He led off again back to the outside. Colton Yo to the inside, the white flag. We're on the foul up and a side by side bow for a second. Colton Yo trying to get his first Gary Cup Series victory. Through one and two, he has a push from Steve Larker. If it all works out, Yo can make the move off of two and down the back stretch. To the rear bumper, that 13 he goes. Off of two now. Does he have the move to the inside? Down the back. No drafting help. Can he make it though? They're three wide for third. That's what Steve Morgan wants. Off into turn number three. Yo has no help. Through three and four. Colton Yo, no help. Steve Morgan leaving the bomb open a little. That 37 chasing him down. Off a of four. They will come. Griffin Linda third in the seven. But he's too far back. No help to the 37 of Yo. Steve Morgan will hold off the pack to win a Pensacola. How about that for Steve Morgan? Colton Yoke can get done. No one could form out there at the end. Steve Morgan wins the Mountain Dew 500 here at Pensacola. Let's now go check the finishing results. Here are the finish results from the Mountain Dew 500 at Pensacola. There are three caution flags for 12 laps and eight lead changes among eight different drivers. Steve Morgan started 36 and breaking home with the victory, leading three laps. Colton Yellens up second, Griffin Lynn in third, Steve Larker fourth, and Jack Marshall rounds up the top five. Isaac Nichols from the pole ends up sixth, Danny Lloyd seventh, Dale Lightning in eighth, Tyler Fink ninth, and Trey Rainey rounds up the top ten. There's your top trying to see Luke Ranger spend his brother there in 11th. Louis Jack Tavo moves up to second in points with a great result in 13th. Carson Bowers led the most laps 11, most of those under caution, but still led the most laps. Ends up 14th. Jay Jefferson led some laps. He ended up 17th. And look down here, 21st to 40th. As 31 cars finished on the lead lap and 33 finished running there at the end. Look down at the rest. Let's now move on to the points. Here are the point standings as we head into the final Super Speedway race before the chase. Max Anderson keeps the points lead, but it's down to 16 points as Octavo moves up to second. TJ Henley falls to third, but he's only 44 points back. Alexander Rowe fourth, but he's a distant 154 back. And Danny Lloyd up inside the top five. He's fifth. We have Trey Rainey in sixth, Dale Lightning seventh, Jack Marshall in eighth, Griffin Lynn ninth, and Nathan Sapleton holds the final spot in tenth. There's your top 20. No, Luke Rainey's only 10 points back. He wants that badly. Steven Taylor is one of the wild cards in 12th. The other one goes to the 38th. Carter Friesen by 7 points over Steve Morgan moves up to the 16th position in points with that win. And some others here. Jay Jefferson, 13th. That uh, win his teammate. John Gambit there in 14th. Stabilito, Galway, Price, Yepes. They'll have a shot at this thing before it's said and done. And even some drivers out here have a shot. Sebastian Kukla has two wins, but with a disappointing race here today. He falls down to 21st in points. With those two victories, if he were to get top 20 points, he could use them towards a wild card. See Patrick Smith, Isaac Nichols, two drivers down here with a win also. So if they get up there, watch for them. How about Hedrick Motorsports, 25th, 26th, 27th. Their other one, 32nd. So they've made no, no noise this season. Hedrick Motorsports with a very rough season. Not one of their drivers top 20 in points. So we move along to our next race and our final Super Speedway race of the Super Speedway Swing. It'll be at Daytona for the Pepsi 400. I'll see you guys then.